Hi, I'm Dwayne Morris, the Urban Soul Chef in the Urban Soul Kitchen. Today I want to share with you uh, one of my favorite meat entrees. I actually have two. One is fried catfish and fried chicken. Anybody else like fried chicken? Let me ask you this. Do anybody want to learn a new, a new way to fry fried chicken or a better way to fry fried chicken? Then you have joined the right stream today. Um, uh, there are so many different ways to fry chicken. But today, what I want to share with you is one of the methods. I have several methods that I use to fry chicken, but I want to show you a combination of wet batter and dry flour. And you're going to have the crispiest, most flavorful coating that you've probably ever experienced if you just flour your chicken. So anybody else out there like fried chicken? If you like fried chicken, just type in the comment section, I like fried chicken. And some of you love it, so just type, I love fried chicken. And today, I'm not going to take a whole chicken and fry the whole chicken. What I'm going to do is um, take you through the process of wings. And with my wings, I don't like to fry the whole wing because sometimes it's difficult in frying it if you don't tie it down right. So what I'm going to do is cut it into the wingette and the drumette, and we're going to use that method as far as cutting the chicken, and then we're going to fry it. So let's get busy. All right, after you wash your chicken, after you wash your chicken, just take it, place it on your cutting board. We'll take a few pieces here, wings. And I like using this knife right here. Cut your wings into sections. You cut the tips off. I, I like to come back and fry these later. I love, that's like a little treat. We take this and we're going to cut it into a drumette, wingette, just like that. This actually helps making, make the chicken fry easier to me because it doesn't have to... Um, go through the cracks and crevices of the wings when it's together. The fries a lot better. And one of the tips I want to tell you is when you fry your chicken, make sure it's at room temperature. That helps with the grease not cooling down so to the point where it causes the chicken to uh, become soggy. Take your time. Cut your wings. Now, if you're talking in the comment section, I'm not able to see that right now. I may not be able to make comments while you're watching the video, but you can make your comments, and I may come back a little later and answer some questions. And while you're out here, I want you to check out my website. I sell fried chicken seasoning, steak seasoning, and I have a Jamaican jerk-inspired seasoning, which I call Alabama jerk because I'm living here in Alabama. All right, that's enough. We got those cut. And I got some more I'm gonna cut, but I'm gonna cut all my wings, and then we're gonna come back, and I'm gonna show you what the next process or next step is. Look at that. Beautiful wings, beautiful. All right. All right, I've gotten all the wings cut. And I'm leaving my wing tips in there as well. So we got them cut. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take some hot sauce. Whatever brand of hot sauce you want to use. I like Louisiana. And we're going to put hot sauce all on there. No specific measurement. You just put as much as you think you need. That's all I need. And this is going to help give the wings flavor as well as make them tender. That vinegar and those peppers from the pepper help make it tender. So you're just massaging it in there. And if you want, you can let it sit for at least five to 10 minutes to get the flavor in there, let it soak in. All right, we're gonna let that sit. sit. You can, like I say, you can let it sit for about 10 minutes just to let that twang get in them wangs. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Okay. After that sits for about 10 minutes, then you come back 
And I'm using my seasoning, Urban Soul Chef fried chicken seasoning. And you can use, this is what I recommend, use some salt, garlic powder, pepper, and a little onion powder. That'll be a great mixture for you if you don't have uh, this right here. And what you want to do is come sprinkle, sprinkle enough over there to cover all the wings. It's not going to be too much like you think. Sprinkle that all over the wings and then massage that into the wings. This isn't nothing you're going to do. This, if you want to do this the right way, you can't do it. It's going to have to sit overnight to marinate. It's really what you want to happen. Marinate so the flavor can actually get in the wings. Or the flavor can get in the wings. The chicken wings. Now you're just massaging. Get that flavor and you can see it all over. It's all over them. Let that sit for about 15 minutes. You're letting those flavors. Look at that. That looks beautiful already, doesn't it? Does that look good? Does it look good? And if you're not following me on Facebook or YouTube, follow me. Take a moment to follow me. Hit that like button. Hit that follow button. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. This is the chicken wings. We're going to let that sit. I'd say actually let that sit up to at least 30 minutes. Let it get in there. This is not, when you really want to do this right, you're actually going to start working the day before. Now, you can do this in one day, but to get your best flavor and your best results, you want to do it the day before. All right, next we're going to do, after we let that sit for about 30 minutes, we're going to get some buttermilk. Pour the buttermilk in there. Now make sure you cover all of them with the buttermilk. And I'm not going to work the buttermilk. I'm just going to make sure it's evenly distributed. And then just shake it and let the buttermilk do what it does. The buttermilk, there's an acid in this buttermilk that actually helps to break the chicken wings down. So I'm going to allow the buttermilk marinated wings to sit for at least 12 to 24 hours. How does that look? That really looks good. Looks good. And we're going to let that sit, as I said, for 12 to 24 hours. I'm actually going to let mine sit for 24 hours because I want the buttermilk and the vinegar from the uh, hot sauce to actually break the wings down, tenderize them, and I want the flavor from the seasonings that I did to actually get in the fiber of the wings. I want every bite you take, take to taste the flavor of those spices. And as I to reiterate what I said earlier, if you don't have my spices or some spices that you bought from the store, all you need is garlic powder, salt, and uh, onion powder, powder, and regular pepper. Mix those together. I'll say uh, two tablespoons of salt and one tablespoon of everything else. Or one teaspoon, just depends on your flavor levels. But uh, And um, there's no specific measurement in this. You have to eyeball it. We're doing soul food with these wings. But don't put too much salt. You can always add salt, but you can't take away salt. So I don't have specific measurements uh, to give you right now. But what I'll do is uh, put measurements in the video. Put measurements there. So you can actually have something to go off and then you can build and take away from what I put in the um, video. So you should see them about now, actually. This looks good. And we're going to let it sit and then I'm going to come back and we're going to go, going to go through the next process. So hang in there. We're halfway there. Oh, yes. Put it in the refrigerator. Cover it. Put it in the refrigerator. For 12 to 24 hours and if you in a hurry try three hours see how that works but uh, you're going to get the best results if you follow these steps and it's going to change your fried chicken game so stay tuned we'll be right back it's 24 hours 24 hours has gone by 
I thought about letting it do 12 hours, but I said, let me do 24. That way, the chicken has a chance to marinate, marinate combina combination of marinating and grinding. So the buttermilk has gone in and broken the tissue down and, and caused it to become tender and flavorful. Now, at this particular time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a wet batter. After we do the wet batter, then we're gonna make the dry combination of the flour and the spices and we're gonna to get to the good part which is frying the chicken all right let's make the wet batter now we have our chicken that's been brining for 24 hours we're gonna remove it from the brine the hot sauce and the buttermilk so it's been marinating very good just sit it to the side get you a good plate or whatever you decide to use sit it to the side Now that it's set to the side, we're going to take the, the leftover brine, mix it with some egg. I'm using two eggs here. You can use one or two, just depending on how many chicken wings you have. Mix it together. And this is going to be our wet brine. Mix in. I'm doing a cup of flour. Mixing it very well. Now that's going to be a little too thick, so I'm going to add some water to it. You can add water or a little more buttermilk. And you want it uh, probably the consistency of pancake batter. Thick enough where it can coat the wings and the dry mixture stays on the wings. That looks good. Now we're going to take the wings, put them back in the same container, but this time it's with the... Uh, batter. Mix it together real good. Now, I don't like gloves. I'm using my hands, but I'm keeping them washed and clean. Do the same thing when you have gloves. You have to wash them too, so what's the difference? That looks good. That looks real good. All right. We've got the wet mixture already, which is right here. And the chicken's in that soaking again. And I'm getting ready to create the dry blend, which is going to be the flour. Put some of the seasoning in here. That. We're going to put some cornstarch in. You may wonder what is cornstarch for? Cornstarch helps it to be crispy. Keeps the chicken from being soggy. Then we're going to put some baking soda in here. That's going to help with the crispiness as well. And whisk it all together. So that helps the chicken to have double flavor. Two coats, double the flavor. Beautiful. All right. Now normally, what do you got? What do you guys normally eat with your fried chicken? I normally, if I'm eating a southern, southern soul food meal, I like to eat sweet potatoes and uh, macaroni and cheese. All right, now you can begin dropping your wings in there. We're going to go with the wingettes first. Well, put them all in here. And just let me wash my hands again. You can shake it, or you can take your hands and cover it. That's it. It's ready to fry. And sometimes what you can do is just set it aside on a plate, let it sit for a minute or two. But so I'm just going to let it sit in here for a minute. And then we're going to take it to fry. And as I, uh, I think I told you guys earlier, what you need to do is uh, once you take it out the refrigerator, bring your chicken to room temperature 
that helps with the frying process. It, it, it helps the grease to stay at a steady temperature. Let me take some of these out. Put them on a plate so that way I can fry more wings at one time. I'm not using a uh, deep fry. I'm going to use a, not even using a, a cast iron, black cast iron skillet. I'm going to use my Dutch oven. That's pretty good when it comes to frying chicken. The only thing I hate is I have a, uh, here at this Urban Soul Kitchen, I have a um, electric stove. I don't like electric stoves at all. You have to, uh, sometimes I have to take, take the chicken off the heat because it's such direct heat. Awful. more in here. Let's tell you, this is a lot of wings I got. I bought the family pack. Y'all still with me? I can't see the comments, but um, you can just tell me where you're from, some of the cities and states you're from. And if you're learning anything, just let me know if you're learning anything on today. Anything that's going to help you in the process of frying chicken. I want you to have some of the best fried chicken when you come together for family functions. This is what you can use. Uh, sometimes you have uh, functions around Labor Day and and uh, Fourth of July, birthdays and different things. Put your mark on that event with your fried chicken. All right, we about ready to fry. Y'all ready to see how they gonna come out? I can tell you, beautiful. See that? That's what they look like. And let them sit for a few minutes. Let them, like, like you do a steak, let it rest. Let it rest with the uh, coating on there. They looking good. Now we're getting ready to take them to the grease. And what I use is um, all vegetable grease. Not, well, shortening. I don't use oil, I lose shortening. Because a lot of times I've used uh, liquid grease and it, it carries a smell with it, a lot of them. And I, I like the shortening. So we're gonna fry it in the Dutch oven in some vegetable shortening. Let's get to frying these chicken wines. All right, back again. Now, I want to get my vegetable oil's temperature up to 375 degrees. That way the chicken will fry fast and consistent. And um, also remember to have your chicken at room temperature. So that way the cold chicken won't cause the temperature of the oil to, uh, to a decrease. That's what I did. Dropped them in the grease, the oil, and I put enough oil in here. I wanted the chicken wings to be covered. I didn't want half of them to be covered and the other half where you have to flip them. Didn't want that. And I see I got room. I can put the rest in here. I 
All right, we're going to let that fry. I was waiting for the grease to get up to 375. When the grease is up to 375, um, it normally takes about 8 to 10 minutes for it to fry. And as I said, since this is a electric stove, I may have to move it over to give it time to temperature to drop. Look at that, beautiful. Look at that. But it's not ready inside. All right, let's give it time to fry. It's almost done, it's rising to the top. Sounds like it's raining if you close your eyes. But that's the sound of the chicken frying in the grease. That's the sound of the chicken frying in the grease. Should be ready in a moment. Time to take it out. It's ready. Beautiful. And that's the whole process right there. We got the wingettes and we got the drumettes and I have a side of ranch right there. I love ranch. And that's the whole process. Look at that. How does that look? That's one of the processes or methods that I use to fry chicken. Marinated it for 24 hours in a buttermilk brine mixture of buttermilk and hot sauce and I double coated it, coated it with wet batter and coated it with dry flour. Did I do okay? You know, the proof is in the, the taste. So try this and tell me what you think. Come back and share some of your pictures. All right, like I said, it's done. We're done. 
Now what I'm going to do is we're going to try this out, see what it tastes like. And I'm going to use some ranch. Mmm, very good. It's crispy. And a mouthful of flavor in every bite, every chew. It's not losing its flavor because it's all in the meat, it's in the coating. And that's what you want. So, try this recipe. Put some pictures up, let us see how it comes out. And uh, if you really want it to be really good, you got to order my seasonings. UrbanSoulKitchen.com or you can use some of your favorite seasonings you can buy at the store or you can use the recipe that I gave you earlier when we first started yesterday but this is real good mmm that's the way we do it in the Urban Soul Kitchen Mm. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating at all. I want you to try this. This is going to make you the star of whatever family gathering or whatever kind of gathering you bring the uh, chicken to. Come back, write some comments, let me know how it worked out for you. And I need you to do me a favor since I shared this secret with you. If you have not subscribed on, on uh, YouTube, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, please. And if you're not following me on Facebook, do me a favor, follow me on Facebook. That encourages me to do more videos. Show me some love, and I'll show you some recipes. All right, God bless you all. I'm so glad you took time to uh, share this experience. Look forward to sharing with you in the future. Mm-hmm.